Welcome to Breakthrough Success. I'm your host, Mark Aberti, the content marketing expert, bringing you five new episodes every week where I and top level guests teach you how to take your business to the next level and achieve your breakthrough. Hello, Breakthrough Success sisters. I just wanted you all to know before the episode actually starts, I've been working a little bit behind the scenes to give you something really special. So a while ago, I wrote my book, Content Marketing Secrets, which helps people create, promote, and optimize their content for growth and revenue. And I just put the finishing touches together to offer that for free to anyone who is interested. So if you want your free copy of Content Marketing Secrets, all you have to do is head over to markgaberti.com slash book. Now, let's jump right into the episode. One of the things that we all have to do is stand out if we want to grow our businesses, if we want to grow our audiences, if we want to make an impact. And part of standing out means ditching the norm, um, being willing to live out your own adventures. So uh, we're going to be focusing on how to do those two things on that path to being able to stand out and create the level of impact that you want to create through your business and uh, in your life. So today's guest, she's going to help us with that. She is the host of the Offbeat Life podcast, which helps people live their best life and become location independent. She interviews inspiring individuals who ditch the norm in order to live their adventure. Today's guest for episode 265 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast is none other than Debbie Archangelis. Debbie, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Hey, Mark. Thank you so much for having me. That was an amazing intro. <laughs> Debbie, thank you for being on the show. And um, it's just great because like, we all want to stand out, but there are a lot of things we have to give up. Like Some people, they like this idea of blending in, camouflaging, <laughs> Uh, because, you know, when you stand out, like, say you're a little more open to criticism, you're a little more vulnerable. So, like, it's a good to stand out. But uh, we're going to talk about, like, how to get out of the norm and be able to do that. So we'll get into that. But let's start with you. So can you share with us a little bit about why you started the Offbeat Life podcast and some of the background? Yeah, sure. Thanks so much for having me here, Mark. So my background is I'm from the Philippines. I actually was born there. And my family all immigrated from the Philippines, and so did I. And throughout my whole life, it's one of the things that Asian people do is we're very much um, driven and focused, and we are very much into careers and not necessarily artistic in a lot of ways. And I was getting out of that um, since the beginning out of the norm because I was always very artistic. I was into photography. I traveled a lot. I was a photojournalist for a few years. And then I became an art teacher and I went through so many different things and I started focusing on social media and travel. And as I was growing my audience, especially through Instagram, people kept asking me for a blog and I'm not a blogger and I was more interested in the conversations that I had when I used to do photojournalism than the actual telling you where to go and what to see. And I've met so many incredible location independent people, digital nomads, and their stories were always so amazing. So I wanted to share that and how we can all live a life that we truly wanted to live. And I mean, I find the digital nomad lifestyle very interesting because you, I mean, the travel, the ability to like be location independent, I wonder if you could go a little deeper into how exactly we can do that. We're definitely going to talk about ditching the norm later, but uh, like for some people, it's more difficult than others to become location independent. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, for a lot of people, it seems very daunting, especially if you're at a job that you don't like, or maybe it's something that you love, but you really want to travel to. And I'm still in that process. I'm still in my day job and I'm actually leaving in a few months to do become to become a location independent freelancer full time. And it's really not as daunting as it may seem. You can do a lot of things. Some people may not even know, but their job could be location independent if they ask their bosses. So it's just a matter of what you're doing. And there's also ways to do it, like becoming a virtual assistant, or if your job is pretty much through computers and you can do that from home, why can't you do it in 
Asia and Europe and South America or even any parts of the United States or if you just want to be location independent in a sense where you can just be anywhere even in your own hometown but you're not dedicated to one area that's what it all means it's not just about traveling it's just about living a life that you truly want to live without having a 9 to 5 to take you back and put you in one space at at a time and you can have the freedom to do whatever you want and you mentioned leaving your day job to pursue the full-time freelancing something that you enjoy uh, I, I'll assume a lot more, but uh, one of the things that um, like some people like they have the day job, they feel like they can't really make that jump or uh, they feel like it's too hard for them to even find time to build that second bridge as they're still doing their day job. They like not really have any kind of uh, escape route uh, planned. And I feel like part of that is because people don't like getting out of the norm. So uh, I'm wondering if you could share with us how I can get a little more comfortable with embracing things, embracing a lifestyle that may not necessarily be the normal, uh, traditional status quo path. Absolutely. It's for most of us, it's just because it's something out of our comfort zone. And like you said, it's out of the norm and being out of your comfort zone and doing something that is not normal to you doesn't have to take to, to be in one place at once. You can do little things every single day that will allow you to reach your goal. So if you want to be location independent and you want to do it, but you're so afraid to do it, don't feel like you have to do this in a month or two. You can just do little things every day. And I know what it's like to be at a job and a nine to five and you're working a lot of hours. The thing is, you have to prioritize your goals and your dreams of whatever it is, because I know I understand <clears throat> we're all tired and it gets exhausting and sometimes you don't have the time. But is it really because you don't have the time or you're not prioritizing it? So instead of saying you don't have the time, you have to say, I'm not prioritizing it. And if you're afraid to do it, do it a little bit at a time instead of doing everything at once. And I know it can also seem very overwhelming, especially if you see a lot of people online, on social media, and they're living the dream. And it's not. It's a lot of hard work. And honestly, the more beautiful it looks, the harder these people actually work. So... Take your time, see what you really want to do. If you really want to do this, you have to prioritize it. And that's a really important point where uh, Debbie mentioned that like the more beautiful it looks, like living the dream, things like that. Um, it's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes. So um, it's definitely like don't try to escape work. Try to like do work that is a lot more meaningful to you and that really resonates with your mission, your purpose and the impact that you want to create. And one of the things that you help people with is living their adventure uh, through your interviews, through your content. But uh, can you go a little deeper into what that means, living your adventure? Um, is that just like carving out your life path, traveling? Like, can you just go a little deeper into that? Yeah, absolutely. So living your adventure means living a life that you have seen yourself. I usually do an exercise that I've done with some of my friends, actually, and we look at what we want, what we think our true success truly is. And it's not about the money. It's about really seeing yourself and what's going to make you happy in the long run. And that's really part of the adventure. So if living your adventure means that you're going to do nine to five and then travel part time or you have this hobby or if you want to be a full time digital nomad, you have to just take yourself again out of your norm and your comfort zone, however fast or however slow you want it to be and just go for it. And we in on my podcast, a lot of <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> a lot of the people that I interview, there was a lot of fears along the way. And they were the ones that took themselves out of that or they had help with the right support system. So I wanted to give the same thing to my audience. And I actually have a really exciting new segment of my show now where I get actual listeners of the show and we mentor that listener and help them live their adventure in whatever it is that they see they want to do with their life. And I mean, that that's a very interesting format for a show, getting your listeners very involved with it. That is like the next level. Like that is something that I recently started to do with the uh, Breakthrough Success Facebook group, which will be in the show notes. So 
I mean, it's really great what Debbie's doing. She's getting her, she's not just sharing content with her audience. She is very actively getting them involved with the content creation process and with her brand as well. And um, I'm wondering if you could share with us like a little bit more about your plans for that and how it's going so far. Yeah, we actually just started the first episode a few weeks ago and it has been going very well. I have a lot more interviews it's amazing how many listeners have come up to me and told me how they really enjoyed it and they want to be mentored as well because for me I wanted to go beyond just sharing inspiring stories a lot of us hear that but it can get really daunting because you hear them their successes and you don't know how to do it with your own life so for me the most rewarding thing about my podcast is helping other people and I sat down with one of my listeners one day, and this is actually how I got the idea. And she was telling me, I really enjoyed this episode you did with Megan Drillinger, who is a location independent writer. And I said to her, why don't you guys meet and let's do an official interview for the podcast? Because I'm sure a lot of people will also want to hear the answers to the questions that you have. So not only are we helping you, but we're also helping more people uh, to to get beyond whatever it is that they're fear uh, fearful of and to become whatever it is they want to do with their life. And there's a lot of people who want to get into the location independent lifestyle, especially as writers. And I mean, when you mention writers, it's just like blogging and like freelancing. There's like so many different applications. And there's also like with your knowledge, like you could turn into training courses. There's like so many different ways to live the lifestyle that vocation for your lifestyle. It's just a matter of putting the work to eventually make it happen. But what do you believe holds most people back for being able to crack out of the norm, uh, live their adventure, being able to be location free? Like with everyone else, Mark, it's really most of us, it's fear. It's fear of the unknown. It's fear of what can fail. That's another thing is failure and I recently talked about this on a, on a blog post and it resonated with a lot of people. So when people see me and they see the podcast, they just think that this is the first time I've done this and there has been no failures and it's just seeing success. And that's really not the case. I've failed as a freelancer three or four times already. So I've learned so much from it and we really have to rethink of the way we see failure and it's not really failure. We're not failing, we're learning. So every time you have failure, it means that you're learning something and you're becoming a better person and you're becoming better with your business and whatever it is that you're going for. So it's mostly fear itself and fear of failure and not also not believing in our own abilities as, as human beings. And we are, we have so much abilities and capacities and we we don't even know until we tap into it so i think you're all going to be very surprised with what you're capable of if you just go for it <laughs> and I, re- I mean i've seen that with myself and other people who i've seen when you do just go for it it's really surprising the results you can get and i ask this question to every guest and fear is just one of those common ones that comes up again and again so you really have to check in on that fear and see how you can get rid of it. I mean, false evidence appearing real, for instance, that's the acronym for uh, fear. But Debbie, I wonder if you could share with us, how exactly can we uh, let go of the fear um, and be a little more fearless? Yeah, it's definitely not an easy thing to let go of. For some people, you're thrown into it without even realizing it or, you know, for example, if you are fearful of losing your job and going into a location independent lifestyle and all of a sudden you lose your job, you have no choice, right? You just have to go for it. Um, Really, it's just exercising and building your confidence. And again, it's little things that you're doing every day. Do something out of your comfort zone, even if it's not something that has to do with your business or becoming a location independent freelancer. Just do something that makes you uncomfortable every week. You know, if you're really brave, maybe every day, that may be a little bit too much, (laughs) but just something out of your comfort zone so that you know that once you decide to really go for it and to let go of that fear, you know, you can do these things that make you uncomfortable and it's going to help you towards the next step with other things in your life. So I think little steps 
goes a long way because we often underestimate what we're capable of. Um, you know, in a, we overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate what we can do in 10 years. So little things, they all matter. And I definitely subscribe to that baby step where um, you just take a few small steps. Sometimes you just got to like throw yourself into it. Like I typically like uh, what really ignites me as a writer for like I write several books, including podcast domination available at markberty.com slash PD. I put that book up for pre-order well before I had actually finished it. So uh, that's one of the ways that um, like if you have that deadline that could entice you to take those baby steps and build up on those and be able to take bigger steps along the way. Everyone has their different preferences. That's just one of the ways. And I definitely do agree with that baby step thing when it's uh, when it's something new that I'm pursuing. You could definitely use that to conquer a bunch of fears. But I think one of the reasons we have fears also is that we've faced a lot of challenges in our journeys, all of us. And I feel like sometimes like we get really burned on a challenge and it's just a matter of being able to get up. So uh, Debbie, I'm wondering if you could share with us one big challenge you faced in your journey and the powerful lesson you learned during that challenge. Yeah, absolutely. There's been a lot of challenges. Absolutely. And most of them is really, again, it's failure with the businesses I've started. And then just having your self-confidence go down and thinking that whatever it is that you did was just all wrong. Again, it was just I failed, you know, I failed at this. I failed at that. Maybe I'm just not good at this. Maybe it's just not meant to be. And then having to go back to a day job that you may not possibly like or enjoy. And it's just feeling, having that feeling over and over again. And then realizing after all of that failures, it doesn't, you know, take, um, it's, it's not a fast realization, but later on understanding again, it's because of all of those failures that allows me to succeed now. And I, I'm so thankful every single day when I look back at everything that I've learned from all of the mistakes, all of the failures that I have and what I'm bringing now into the table and what I have to offer because of that. So the challenges, you know, I don't even remember them specifically because it's not one big thing. It's all the little things that makes you give up or makes you not want to do anything anymore. But at the end of the day, again, it's prioritizing what you really want to do with your life and just being thankful for what you have and what you learn from all of it. A big theme that I'm really taking away from this episode is prioritization. And we very frequently find ourselves saying that I don't have the time to do this, to do that. But it all comes down to prioritization. And in some cases, we know what's important. Like, you know that you have to write the book, but uh, you get swamped in your emails or something else distracts you. So how can we prioritize the things that truly matter, the uh, goals that are going to lead to their most results? For me, really, it's scheduling. <laughs> I have to schedule. I literally have to schedule everything. If it's not in my calendar, I forget. Because again, if you have your day job and then you have your business that you're trying to run, it's all going to mesh in together. Even with my personal life, with my life partner, we have to prioritize and schedule in date nights. You know, so it's not just about business and it's not just work. It's also prioritizing everything that's important to you and really writing it down. So for me, when I write something down, that's it. That means it's important and I have to do it. And my calendar is my, you know, it's my go to. That's where I see whatever it is that I'm doing. Otherwise, I forget. <laughs> I forget everything. So writing it down, scheduling it out. Once you write it down, it's a priority and you have to do it. And I mean, scheduling is something that I do as well. So I definitely see the value in just the night before just laying out your entire day or week even just to see like, okay, this is when I have to work. This is when I got to uh, spend time with family. There's like so many different things that you have to do. But if you schedule it, it all becomes so much easier. And one of the things that you could also do to uh, make things easier is to read books because if you have any skill that you're trying to master, you can master by reading books and uh, with that in mind, Debbie, I'm wondering if you could share with us three books that you believe will have a positive impact on us. Absolutely. So my three go-to books that I absolutely love is Tim Ferriss's 4-Hour Workweek. 
Um, that was the first book that really allowed me to realize I can be location independent and to really own my own time. Um, another one is How to Win Friends and Influence People. By, uh, and I, I'm so in love with that book. It was written a long time ago. Um, by Dale Carnegie, and it still pertains now with how we deal with people and how we can have successful relationships with people, not just with business, but just everyday relationships. I love that book so much. I can't, I can't even tell you. I'm sure a lot of people have said that book, but I really love it. And T. Harv Ecker, um, I believe it's called, uh, uh, I have, I believe it's the Millionaire Mindset. Hold on, let me check. The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Yes. So T. Harv Ecker wrote that one. And it's incredible because it really tells you about your mindset with money and why certain people make more and certain people don't. And we have a money blueprint and he talks about that. And it's pretty incredible. And yeah, those three books are completely my Bible. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I read them over and over again. And I, yeah, it's, I would recommend everybody read those three books because they're amazing. They've changed my life pretty much. Debbie, thank you for sharing those great book recommendations. Those will all be in the show notes, markabury.com slash E265. We also see podcast domination in the show notes. We mentioned that a little earlier, but uh, the link again to that is markabury.com slash PD. And before we wrap up this episode, Debbie, I've asked you several questions throughout our time together, but what do you believe is one question that we need to be asking ourselves more often? I really think we need to ask ourselves and not, you know, not just in a flimsy way, but what is it that we really value the most in our life? And especially in the day and time where there's a lot of things that you see on social media and everything else and you really have to see where you're spending your time in and if that's really going to get you to where you're going to be in the future. And is that the life that you want to have for yourself? So think about where you're putting all of your energy and effort in and see if that's the future that you want for yourself. So if you're putting a lot of effort and energy into a relationship that you hate or not happy with or if it's a job, that you do not want, it's going to keep growing because whatever you put your time and effort in grows. So that's just uh, every day I ask myself that is the things that I'm doing today, something that I want to take with me. And it's, is it something that I'm going to love to have in the future as well? Because that's, I think we don't ask ourselves enough that, and we just go through life doing tasks, and doing things that we don't even think about, but we know we don't want for our future. So, yeah. <laughs> Debbie, thank you for sharing with us that great question. All of your great insights uh, throughout this episode. If you guys want to learn more about Debbie, head over to the Offbeat Life podcast, which will be in the show notes. And uh, stay on the lookout for those mentorship episodes where Debbie will be getting her listeners involved in a um, within the content creation, which again, I think is a really uh, fabulous idea for any podcast host. But Debbie, once again, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. It was such a pleasure to have you on Breakthrough Success. Thank you so much, Mark, for having me. I really had a great time. How does over 100 retweets per day sound to you? My free ebook, 27 Ways to Get More Retweets on Twitter, has you covered. I use the methods within this ebook to get over 10,000 retweets every single quarter to learn 